Hi friends! This is Dainty Tank. Thank you for watching. This is Highway Blossoms. And I looked it up, it's part 10! 10! Part 10! Poke the toad around the upper eye card area to play the rest of this playlist. Meanwhile, I'm going with a theme. So deal with it. Ah! That's probably really loud. I'm sorry, I should have made a noise alarm there. Noise alarm. Anyways. Warning? Yes. Warning. Hi! <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you coming and hanging out with me. This might be selfish content, because I don't think many people are watching this with me, but it's, it's okay. You know why? I don't know why, but I'm doing it anyway. You know why? I don't either. So let's just do this. <laughs> Last time we played essentially we watched amber uh combat mariah essentially <laughs> and b basically burst her way to old chip uh and then they found treasure which is their second treasure holy snap and then uh take off towards wherever their new location is i forgot where they went Somewhere, somewhere green, because Amber wanted to show Marina, and Marina was excited about something green, but subdued because there's some weird, awkward tension that they're doing. I think it's supposed, it's like setting in that, oh, well, I guess this is gonna be over soon, and I don't want it to be over, but we can't talk about our feelings. <sighs> no, no. You're gay. You can talk. That's the that's the thing. Queer relationships, they talk. Communicate. Communication. It's the best thing in the world. And with that, that's actually keep you on. <laughs> so, Angel Landing. Zion. Oh, they went to Zion. That's where it was. Okay. Oh, here we go. A brisk wind curls around me as I step onto a patch of dirt that barely that can barely be called a parking spot in the place that can barely be called a campground. Oh. Misty curtains have settled over the nearby hills, and mountains and small specks of leftover mountain dew morning dew. <laughs> Not mountain dew. <laughs> leftover mountain dew, you know. <laughs> Those hillbillies came in overnight and spread that Mountain Dew. Ew. Ew. Anyway, leftover morning dew occasionally drip onto me from above. Bending down, I drop my backpack and pull on the tongue of my sort of new hiking boots. A little big, but they'll work. Sort of new? Oh, did you inherit them? Considering these came from the stash of supplies we borrowed from Mariah in New Mexico, her feet must be freaking huge. Why did you basically borrow their stuff and never give it back? All said? <laughs> okay. Marina is standing beside me, frowning at her own Velcro-strapped Velcro boots. Just about. These boots are pretty big, though. You think so? They feel a bit snug to me. Uh. Sheesh, never mind about Mariah. Hey, forget about the treasure. Let's just dress you up as Bigfoot and turn you in for a cash reward. <laughs> <laughs> Joke is awful and I know it. Still, Marina plays along, sticking her tongue out in a half-playful manner before she forces a tired smile. The whole time, she doesn't make eye contact. So much for lightening the mood. What are you doing with the mood? Can you guys talk? I think you want to talk, but I don't think you're talking, and I don't know why. Do you have to be in the right location to talk? Is that like... Are you geolocation based? Anyways, last night's sudden tension is still present, even though we tried to ignore it or pretend it isn't there. We both know. We both can't look at each other directly, or conversation feels awkward and stilted. 
So basically as if you were, you know, meeting for the first time how you should have been when you first hung out. Anyways, I have feelings. Deal with it. I match. But we pretend everything's normal as we try to put on our best performances and reenact our usual routine. So, how long is the hike? The brochure said about 90 minutes each way. Might take even longer in this weather. Oh. I can feel the gulf between us. It's like not yet another canyon, except I don't know how to cross this one. The picture in the brochure was super pretty. Angel's Landing, right? Now it's her turn and try to lighten the mood. I hate how we're both too afraid to just address the issue. But I'm just as guilty as she is here. What is the issue? Like, is it for sure just the... We want- we don't want this to end? I say, play along as best I can. Yeah, it's nice. It's supposed to be the most scenic view in Zion. That's what Gramps told me anyway. This hike was one of his favorites. Said the view is so lush, and there's so many trees and plants that he discovered several new shades of green up there. It was one of the spots that he was most looking forward to visiting with me. I glance back up at the mountains. The mist doesn't look like it will clear anytime soon. In fact, it seems to be swallowing up more of the landscape. It's got Marina's attention too. She stares up as if she's picking out specific details in the fog. While she's distracted, I let my gaze rove over her again. Guiltily, I'm like I'm sneaking glances, but I don't care. Admiring the sweep of her shoulders, down into her collarbone, the rest of the curves of her body. Shoosh. You have it bad. Turn it up a little bit. There we go. Right there. I let myself examine her like I did when we first met, and like I've been consciously abstaining from. Looking her over like, it doesn't matter if she catches me anymore. It doesn't, though. She doesn't, though. Oh, she doesn't, though. I may as well be invisible to her right now while she studies the mountaintops. And I want her to pay attention to me. She's wearing her usual boutique brand clothes. Their cute frilliness is just as perfect as ever for Marina. But they clash with the clunkiness of the ugly brown boots. You sure you want to wear that? They might just get in the way. Uh-huh. She gasps, almost offended by the suggestion that she wear anything else. But my skirt is so comfy! Aren't you supposed to wear comfy clothes on hikes? Yeah. Besides, with a name like Angel's Landing, it has to be pretty relaxing. She gives me a big, honest smile, tipping her head to the hills. It's the first real smile I've seen from her all day. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Let's go! I melt, letting her skewed, letting her skewed reasoning fall into the wayside just this once. Warm fuzzies and the goofy grin take over our my dour mood just for a moment. Why are you in a dour mood? All right, but no whining if they end up being a problem. Jeez. Slinging the backpack over my shoulder, we head for the shuttle that leads to the trail. Logs in a stone fire pit adorn the side of each lot that we pass. Maybe when we get back, we'll go to the camp store and pick up some supplies to roast marshmallows. I think she'd like that. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's bad. Oh, I'm hot. Don't mind me. Oop. Better. Marina's heavy breathing guides me as we slug our way uphill, the previous light mist having now morphed into a thick and dreary fog. I cling to the chained railing as I stumble my way up the rocks. It's the only protection from the sheer drop-off besides us. All it would take 
is one slip for me to take a nosedive into the valley below, and I wouldn't even see it coming. Turns out the fluffy and enticing name Angel's Landing doesn't come with the relaxing stroll Marina was hoping for. This feels more like a ghastly death march. My sweat-drenched legs feel like pudding under the anchor that is a measly five-pound backpack. No one else on the shuttle even bothered to attempt the hike alongside us. I attempt to form words between pained breaths, feeling like a rock is being smashed into my lungs with each step. We should turn back. Can't see Jack. It's not safe up here. What? She sounds like she's doing about as well as me, echoing the same lung-puncturing gasps. But we're so close! There's no way we're not almost there! We stop, collapsing against our knees as we try and catch our breath. Not gonna mean a lot if we end up falling off a cliff. I thought... you were... the one who wanted... to do this so bad! Every couple words are punctuated by her gasping for breath. Yeah, but... Amber, please. Let's keep going. Her voice is a whimper, fragile and meek, and I fold. Okay, okay. Marina has a way of making me shut up when she wants to, whether she knows it or not. Today, it doesn't make a difference. I'm not going to be the one who makes things worse. She's wrong about one thing, though. I wasn't the one who wanted to hike up here. Gramps was. It gets easier after our break. The trail begins to plateau and the steepness evens out, fading behind us until the return trip. But that's going down the hill. It's a lot easier. I think we're already here. See? (laughs) What did I tell you? Marina darts ahead, disappearing into the fogs so she can look at the mythical view that the brochure and I have preached to her and Gramps to to me. But if my suspicions are right, this weather and the view aren't going to be very compatible. Following behind, I step out into the cloudy murk and into an area that offers only slightly more visibility. Oh, that's pretty. Marina stands still on the center of the cliff, her hand clutched to her heart. What should have been a bird's eye view of Zion is nothing but a sea of fog. The lush greenery and full valleys are invisible. Only a few overgrown bushes and some rocky peaks points peek out above the clouds. I was expecting it, but the sight itself really is numbing. The hollowness in my stomach. The one I've gotten so used to feeling rears its head once again, only intensified by Marina's silence. Any expression shrouded by her bangs as she tilts her head down. Sorry. Gently, she shakes her head. Don't worry about it. It's not your fault. You tried to warn me. Marina... I don't know how, what to say. I'm disappointed too. There was a lot of places Gramps always talked about visiting. After we settled down and kicked back for a few years. After I finish repairing the RV. After I get better. This place came up more than the others though. Not just Zion, but the landing. Kept saying, we were gonna hike up here, have a picnic, maybe watch the sun come up. A slight smile comes to my face as I think about him trying to make that hike. I'd have liked to see that whole geezer try. Well, I'm not a big enough sap to try and make all of my um, Gramps plans happen now. It would have been nice to see the view. With Gramps, Marina, and everything that's happened over the past month, it just seemed fitting to make the trip. Angel, Angel's landing glance back to Marina. 
The hand that was clutched to her chest now stretched outwards, grasping at the empty air. A slight breeze blows through, ruffling her hair. She looks beautiful. She looks... Angelic. I don't go to church much as a kid, but she looks like someone I'd see on a stained glass window, right next to a rendition of Calvary or Skull Hill. It's frustrating to have come this far for nothing. But is it because of the fog? Because of Gramps? Or because of Marina? My teeth grit, grinding against each other until under what feels like an Im unimaginable weight. Come I can on, let's read. Go. Jeez. I turn around, begin down the slope. There's nothing else worth seeing up here. Marina doesn't follow. No spirited footsteps trailing behind me. No speeding bullet blazing ahead. Marina, we're going. Comes out a little bit more bite than I intended, but I don't care. Just want to get out of here now. Marina is hesitant to answer, but eventually manages to spit it out, sounding more like a question than an actual statement. I don't want to. Oh? That's a change. What? I don't want to leave. Not yet, anyway. And the way that I turned back to, to her for an explanation, only to be greeted by a pleading look instead. I'm used to it by now. I know I am, but do you think we could wait a little longer, just to see if the fog clears? I don't know that it is. I respond with a blank stare. It's like she's not even talking to me. Don't be stupid. No. Stare back down the hill, not bothering to wait for Marina this time. It's past noon. If it hasn't cleared by now, then it's not going to anytime soon. Yeah, that's that's, that's actually not how fog works. It, it can. It's not the heat of the day yet. So much for not making things worse. Did you leave her? Oh. That's pretty. That was a very pretty transition. I nudge the fire with a stick. It doesn't do any good, though. As the logs just tumble on each other, smoldering the already pitiful fire flame. For a moment, our lot is only lit by a few remaining embers in the pit. Sighing, I grab a bottle of lighter fluid and squirt it onto the ashes. No. 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 Don't use lighter fluid. <sighs> Don't use lighter fluid. Use a log cabin method. Log, log. Your fire starter in here. Log, log. Then you keep building your log cabin. Heat channels through the middle. You don't build it too high. Don't do this stupid little Boy Scout TP thing. Like, I never ever had the option for lighter fluid. However, Boy Scouts used it all the freaking time. Don't use it. <laughs> you don't need it. An artificial flame roars into existence, then peters to the size of a pathetic candle wick flicker just as quickly. Yeah, don't use lighter fluid and then try to cook things like marshmallows. Nope. I plunge the stick back into the fire and scrape cinders from the glowing wood. Eventually, a flame catches on the charred wood log and grows until the pit is blazing once again. Aha! About damn time. The joy is exclusive to me, however, as Marina stays silent, staring into the fire. One another s'more? She bounces back to life. Oh my god, yes, please! She catches herself, switches back to broodiness. I, I mean... Sure, I guess. What the heck is going on? 
They roll my eyes, but can't help smiling on the inside. No matter how hard she tries, she's still the same Marina she's always been. I grab a marshmallow and stick it on the end of a bent coat, uh, coat hanger from before handing it to her. Without another word, she plops it into the fire. Meanwhile, my eyes are drawn to the neglected bag of hot dogs laying around, laying behind the chocolate and graham crackers, unopened and ignored. I bought them because I thought Marina would like the variety, but I should have known she would just she would only go after the marshmallows. She's been devouring them. She opened the bag when she we left the store, and it's already half empty by the time we got back to the campsite. She clung to the bag like a security blanket the whole way. It's a miracle there were even any left. Shrugging, I tape one of the hot dogs out of the bag and impale it on my coat hanger, then put it in the fire next to Marina's. Even though we're this close to each other, there's still an air of tension. The one that's pervaded since we left Arches. Neither of us have addressed it, but the inevitability of the treasure, the thick uneasiness that hangs over us, it's suppressed. But it's definitely there. But it's gotten better since we left Angel's Landing. The snacks were a peace offering of sorts, I guess. Although I was pleasantly surprised that she sat so close to me, even with three other logs around the fire pit. I fixed my gaze on the flames. The dog is slimy, oozing with condensation that drips and sizzles on the ashes. Oh god, it's on fire! It's on fire! 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 <laughs> good, good job, voice actor. Marina's coat hanger whooshes over me like a plastic uh, <laughs> comment. The marshmallow now a smoldering ball of inferno. Here, give it to me. But it's on fire, Amber! Fire! I can see that. Just give it. She panics, squirming as her previous marshmallow, as her precious marshmallow burns before her very eyes. All right, just don't hurt yourself, please. Frantically, she passes me the wire, biting her nails as I try to blow it out. <laughs> yeah. Soon the fire clears. The marshmallow, once white and fluffy, is now black and charred. Ah, now it's ruined. It's no big deal. You can still eat it. Preparing the s'more, I break away the chocolate and cracker, then squish the marshmallow between them. Ew, gross! But it's all black and stuff! <laughs> hey, don't knock it till you try it. Honestly, I think I might prefer it burned. That's so... ew. <laughs> she gives me a nervous laugh. Here, just try it. Marina stares at the s'more and gulps. Fine, but only because you asked. Uh... Oh. Closing her eyes, she opens her mouth wide. Wide. Open. This time, it's my turn to gulp. I shuffle back. <sighs> Subtly trying to avoid eye contact and once again failing, I pop the s'more into her mouth and let out a restful sigh. Like bubblegum, she munches on it <laughs> in the corner of her mouth intently trying to dissect the flavor in her own cute way. So? Her eyes grow wide in shock. It's good! <laughs> right? Doesn't it give it a nice smoky flavor? Mm-hmm. It's a little bitter at first, but the marshmallow gets really crunchy. So good. Oh. I told you so. You just gotta give these things a shot. I can't believe I had my first s'more and found a way to make it better in the same day. Oh. I feel like that would take most people like a bajillion years to figure out. Oh. But it only took me one night because I got you, Amber. That's really cute. Gobsmacked, dumbfounded, they're both stupid fancy words, but I think they work when trying to figure out this thing sitting beside me. Amber? You're kidding me. Oh. What? Your first s'more? <laughs> well, I've seen people eat them on TV and stuff before, but... You have never ever had a s'more in your entire life. Now that I think about it, I guess I haven't. Oh, my dear. That confirms it. Huh? Confirms what? You're an alien. The government has just been keeping you hidden all this time. That's why I met you near Roswell. 
It's the only explanation. I am not. If I were an alien, then why do I look human? That's just a flesh suit. A disguise so you can blend in. That's mean. You can't just buy these good looks at the costume store. Oh. What's your sector ID? Is this your first time away from your home planet? Amber, stop. It's not my fault. Her face puffs out, and I have to resist the urge to poke and deflate it. If I don't quit, she may actually start pouting. I'm sorry, I'll stop. I'm tempted to squeeze one more joke out, but side against it to try to hold back the snicker under my breath. Hmm. I think I like you better when you're serious. Whoa! She crosses her arms, turning away as she closes both eyes to block me out. Then with a grin, one eye open. We both burst out laughing. Since the hike, the fog has climbed down the hill, envelop enveloping the campground. Even here, it's carved out a small pocket. The breezy chill surrounding us as we take in the warm glow of the fire. It feels nice. But for real, I still can't believe this is your first time leaving home. She settles back down and places her hands in her lap, teetering side to side as she looks at the sky, even though there's nothing to look at but mist. Yeah, sometimes I have trouble believing it too. Since there's so many of us, I guess mom and dad could never afford to take us anywhere. That's why I thought, if her family is as big as she says, it's not like they could have just packed up and traveled like me and Gramps. You said you have nine brothers and sisters, right? Yep. There's nine of us, plus mom and dad, so eleven all together. Yeah, that's a lot. Jesus. Right? Everyone says our house is pretty big, but it's always been so cramped that I've never been able to tell. <laughs> that's fair. I've never even had my own room. I've always had to share one with some of my sisters. My older brother shared two until one of them went off to college. Is that the same brother whose car got torn apart by Mariah? She laughs guiltily. Yeah, he always called it his love wagon. Ew. If that thing was a love wagon, then my motorhome is a love palace. Ooh, that's a good name for it. <laughs> Don't even start. Anyway, he said he wanted to get a new one when he got to Salt Lake City, so I don't think he'll be too angry. Hold on. That's in Utah, too. Why didn't you tell me? The detour would have been a pain in the ass. But if you wanted to visit him, I wouldn't have minded the extra miles. Not if it was for you. Oh? Marina does a double tech and take, and I realize I've given too much away. You'd have to pay for gas, though. Marina blinks, then smiles. Crisis averted. Nah, it's okay. I want to do this without my family's help. Besides, it's only a community college. Your brother moved from New Mexico to Utah so he could attend a community college? Uh-huh. He sends me a gift every month. Last month, it was a top hat. I put it right on top of the desk in my room. Oh. She pauses for a moment. Uh, mine and my sister's room, I mean. Your family sounds about as weird as you. Really? Huh. Yeah, I guess we are. She beams, wearing the title of weird like a badge of honor. As she should. That's not a good fit. Actually, maybe it is. It is. I like it. Besides, Dad keeps us all in line. He's a defense lawyer, super straight-laced. You remind me of him, actually. He likes everything nice and orderly, which is bad for him because he's surrounded by us, but... She talks for a long time, chattering and laughing about her family. The smile never leaves her face. I almost get lost in it. I almost want to. For the precious minutes that she speaks, I forget the tension that's shadowed us since arches and could believe it was never there. I love that about Marina. Even though we're wet with rain, or humoring truck drivers, or racing a lunatic down a highway, she never hesitates to smile. For her, it's always poised on the brim, waiting to shine through. And could listen all night, but she trails off only a short time later. Uh, I'm sorry. This must be boring, right? Nah. 
I can tell you love him a lot. It was always just me and Gramps. So it's sort of interesting to see how other families work. The lot fell silent, save for the crackling flames. I braced myself for what I know was coming. Hey, Amber? What happened to your mom and dad? I stare into the fire. It pops, casting up delicate embers that fall and vanish in the dirt. I'm sorry. That was too personal. No, it's fine. They're both around, I think. Only met dad once a long time ago. <sighs> Me and Ma don't get along very well. I haven't spoken to her since I was 16. Last I heard, she was living in some trailer park in Ohio. Is that why you lived with your grandpa? Sorta. Ma always had her... issues. So the court said Gramps could take care of me when I was a baby. I stifle a laugh. Not that it did any good. The geezer had the bright idea to haul me around the Midwest and East Coast for half my life. <laughs> he took care of you all by himself? He must have been amazing. <laughs> Try again. He was an old hippie who was stuck in the 70s and <laughs> spent most of his time listening to weird music. The same weird music you've been bonding to this girl over? Sounds just like you. Hey, watch it. If anything, he was more like you. I was always cleaning up his messes, even as a little girl, even near the- I choked down the growing lump in my throat. Even near the end. Amber, I- It was always just the two of us, though. Us, or any random old friend he wanted to see. Even when he decided to settle down in Colorado, it was just us. People would come and go, but it was always us. And I was there for all of it. I was there for every single appointment. I was there at the hospital, and I was there at the funeral. Ma didn't even bother to come to that, but I was there. And he was always there too. Oh, You really miss him, huh? My voice lowers to a whisper, raspy and dry. Yeah. Oh. Something slumps against my shoulder. Glancing down, I discover Marina's head resting against me. What are you doing? Nothing. Ah. She looks up at me. Want me to stop? Nah. No. Keep doing it. Mm. Okay. Oh. We should turn in soon. We have a big day ahead of us. Yeah, maybe. We sit in silence for a little while. Or maybe it's a long time. I can't tell it's a nice silence, though. A comfortable one. Finally. Oh. <laughs> the engine dies. I can still hear the power buzzing before it surges down, leaving us with the ambience of a settling motorhome. We're here. Not a lot of cars here, huh? Guess the rest of the world just hasn't caught up yet. That won't last for long. Any day now, people will figure out it's here and an army of would-be treasure hunters would be swarming this place, drooling at the chance to find gold. The last of the gold. There's a fluttering in my chance chest, and I tighten my grip on the wheel. It's the end of our adventure. I bet our names have spread across the land and struck fear into the hearts of our rivals, giving them no other choice but to call it quits. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Or maybe someone already came through and found the treasure. What? Don't say something scary like that! Still wrapped around the t wheel, my clammy hands start shaking. Marina takes Nogus, looking over with sympathetic eyes. Hey. She takes her hand and gently places it on top of mine, giving it a reassuring squeeze. I let both fall into my lap. She's warm. We're doing this together, okay? The flutters tickle the inside of my chest until I can't help smiling. Right. Let's do it. All right. Regretfully, I force out a nod and pull my hand out of Marina's. It feels wrong, like throwing away a precious gift. 
Reaching into the console, I retrieved the journal for what may be the last time. It's well loved, bent spine, wrinkled pages, and folded corners on a flimsy paper cover. Looking back, it's been getting roughed up since the moment we got it. Ever since that weird station attendant let Marina have it for free way back at the Traveler store. Hard to believe this crap thing, this cheap thing, was the road trip, was the roadmap to something so valuable. This cheap thing was a roadmap to something so valuable. I can read! Taking a deep breath, I skim over to final entry. Oh dear. After several days of travel, I believe I have finally arrived at my first destination. It is well known to- I- It is well known I have an astute eye for locations. After all, this is how I found my precious bounty. So it was no mistake that I easily found the perfect hiding spot place within this valley. I arrived on the horseback at the blistering peak of noon, looking for shelter from the coming night. I began noticing something different, something distinct. Crimson, all of it. Shades lighter than pink and darker than blood. The color stained it all, from giant, unmovable stones to the tiniest grains of sand. It was as if the land had absorbed the sun's heat and reflected it outwards. Even at sunset, the cave I settled in emanated in a bright red glow that speckled out from its opening. That night, as I laid on the ground watching the flames of my fire shoot up into the cave's roof, still too high, don't do that, <laughs> I wondered if there were more places like this out in the unsettled land. During my travels on the trail, I was too preoccupied with preparations to observe the world around me, but now that I have achieved success, maybe I shall. It would be a shame if my superb observational skills went to waste. Windstone Arch. How? It's probably the Vegas entry so far. But I can feel it. It has to be there. I slap the journal shut and lay it to rest in the center council, right next to all the cassette tapes. <laughs> Marian and I look at each other, now sharing the same piercing determination. Alright, let's get this show on the road. Yeah. Whew. Because of the lack of crowds, getting around is a lot easier than usual, allowing us to take in the scenery for once instead of slogging through zombified hordes. Even though there's not many people around, it somehow feels fuller here. Everywhere we walk, we're surrounded by layered dunes and sandstones towering over us stripped with faded reds and calico browns. Somehow, we do eventually manage to find the Windstone Arch. Unlike the arches back in Utah, it isn't big and majestic. It's not a giant upside-down horseshoe that lords over us as we look on and aw. It's not even an arch as much as it is a cave, really. Just a jagged, overgrown rock with a few crevices. Big enough for a person to enter. Still, despite this, despite the fact that it doesn't compare to the size or grandeur of anything else we've seen together so far, and despite that it hardly took us any time at all to find it, it's still imposing. The longer I stare at it, the bigger it gets, like it's judging us. It isn't calling into question our abilities, or even if we can find it. It's gauging us to see if we're ready. Are we? I look over at Marina. A small bulge forms in her throat before she swallows it back down. Is she? I return my gaze to the arch, asking the same questions over and over in my head. Am I? Finally, we look to each other. Marina readies the metal detector strapped to her bad back, gives me a nod, which I return. Even if we weren't ready, even if this is the worst mistake of my life, this is something both of us have to do. Our steps in sync, we march over to the rocks and desert shrubs before crouching into the cavern. Wow, that's pretty. Sunlight squeezes into the cave, dyeing the rock columns neon red. 
Rena begins scanning with the metal detector, listening intently for a beep. The narrow space forces us to huddle together as we heave our way through the arch, repeatedly brushing against each other. At first, it's accidental, but I find myself craving it more and more. To get closer. To feel her. To watch as her hair absorbs the brilliant glow of the cave. I'm deprived of all of that, though, as her metal detector vibrates in her hand, making a low rumble. It, she takes off the headphones and points to the wall. There! I avert my gaze and move past her, taking a knee as I slip the bag off my shoulder and pull out a man-drilled pickaxe. Careful not to hit her, I start chiseling away at the rock. Soon, the crack in the wall grows and small pebbles and gravel start flying off. I reposition myself and block Marina from getting hit by any of it. The small portion of the wall crumbles away and after a few more strikes, reveals a hollow space. It's just big enough to squeeze your hand into. It's gonna suck if some creepy thing's gone and made its home in there. <laughs> oh man! Shuddering, I reach into the space and fill something square and wooden. With some budging, it comes free and easily slides out. A box. Its familiarity is expected, but it doesn't stop my heart from leaping any less. Nor Marinas, who squeaks out a gasp. Ready? This time, she barely nods, unsure of what to say. But like ripping off a bandage, I swing the lid open before she can even answer, <laughs> give a real answer. Nuggets, a pile of them, filled from top to bottom, all misshapen and morphed. The sight isn't anything new, but this time it feels different. Like for the first time, the reality is finally stuck in, and everything up till now has been a haze. We both just stare at it, an entire universe of thoughts race through my mind, yet it all comes up blank. What now? It's directed more towards myself than Marina, but it's the first time I manage to spit it out, and ultimately the most important. Marina doesn't answer at first, instead just tilting her head, trying to process the question, but finally she gives a simple smile. I saw a sign for a trail on the way over here. Why don't we go hiking? Hiking? I freeze for a second, then laugh under my breath. The more I think about the simplicity behind her words, the more I laugh under until I border on sounding like a hysterical madman. Hiking? For real? I keep laughing, struggling to keep it together, even after I start having trouble breathing. Poor Marina isn't in on the joke, though. Within a matter of seconds, her face goes from concern, confusion to concern, then pouting. I don't know why you're laughing. I was being serious, you know? <laughs> Settling down, I wipe a fake tear from my eye, an occasional chuckle still managing the breakthrough. No, no, I know you were. <laughs> then what's so funny? Nothing, just... I finally regain complete composure and smile at her. Yeah, sure. Let's go hiking. That sounds nice. Can you please keep to the signs? Oh my god. I will! Stop being such a worrywart! Marina skips through the sand, gleefully oblivious that her trail is badly marked patch of dirt over the plains of the Mojave. That's what you said last time. If you're not careful, we're gonna get lost. Again. Aw, you didn't like those old cabins we found? <laughs> it gets old after the second time, Mare. It kills daylight, too. The sun has faded to orange, and we'll soon sink out of view. There's no way we're getting back before dark. But hey, maybe that's not such a bad thing. We already found the treasure, so spending more time with Marina is a nice reward. So, about this fire wave thing. And yes, I know it's not an ocean of lava, smarty pants. Oh? <laughs> Damn, I must be running out of material. I mean, it's so cool. Well, it's hot, I guess. <laughs> but what is it? What's the fire wave? It's a, a windy thing that winds around rocks and stuff and looks like fire. At least, I think that's what it was. Oh? 
A devilish grin and slink, <laughs> slinks onto Marina's face, and she attaches herself to me like Velcro, nudging my shoulders. You don't know what it is either, do you? Nope. W what? Do so. Uh-uh. <laughs> Her grin grows until I force myself to look away. She's not going to get the satisfaction. I've seen pictures. Oh, you've seen pictures? What sort of pictures? You know, the picture-y kind. Ooh. I can just feel her reveling in this. For the first time, she's got me playing right into her hands. Oh, shut up. I feel a slap against my wrist, then a tug. Looking down, I see Marina's bright dimple shining through her round cheeks. Why don't we find out together? Oh, I'm stunned. I'm in the position we've been in before, but... It's supposed to be the other way around. I'm always pulling her. That's my job. But now it's her smooth fingers locked around my wrist. Her fingernails greasing against my skin. The realization doesn't even have time to sink in before she propels herself forward with me in tow. Hey, wait! Hold on! I keep sand and grit as I'm practically dragged along by Marina, who meets my yelps with surprise. Then she halts as quickly as she took off, leaving me to shoot myself and push it forward and stumble to a stop. You could have at least warned me before you. I go silent. Marina does too. The fire wave. Swirling ribbons of red wrap around the hillside and stretch out to the horizon. The setting sun casts light and shadows across the ground and sky, shading it all with intense golds, pinks, and purples. As the sky dims, a shred of stray light passes over the shade and shines directly on us, directly on Marina. She stares on, silent. I can feel every glint of emotion coming from her, every breath taken away. Every raw feeling that builds up inside her only be choked back down. All of it. I glance between her and the scene stretch out before us. The pockets of sky with their deep, vivid colors are beautiful, but the choice is easy. I fixate on Marina. Her clear, sweet blue eyes. Her cute, round cheeks. Her lips as they quiver ever so slightly. Laying a hand on her shoulder, I turn her towards me. And softly touch her cheek. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm dying. Her mouth slips open with a faint gasp. Bale takes a gentle stroke of her face for the uncertainty to be wiped away. Marina holds my gaze, my eyes relax, and I step closer so I can feel the warmth of her body against mine. And then I lean in and press my lips to hers. Oh, so soft. I keep myself pressed against her, letting my lips move with natural flow. But she doesn't press back. Afraid, I pull away. But before I can step back, she pulls me closer and lets her lips melt into mine. I let the pattern take control. Our mouths move inside each other, full of tender caution as we ease in. We repeat the process indefinitely, bathed in the light of the sunset, and sunset, and two of us exchange something. I eventually pull back, unsure of what to say, and scared of what I could. We turn back to find the last rays of sunlight slipping beyond the sand. Something brushes against my hand, tickling for a moment before intertwining between my fingers. Her grip is loose but I wrap my fingers around so that I'm holding her firmly. Yay! We watch the last of the light drift into a peaceful evening. Together. It's pretty. Yeah. Oh, that was cute. Oh. <laughs> oh. Teen change? What now? <laughs> oh, 
Okay, I think we are going to leave this here. I know, cliffhanger. Um, but appreciate you all. I hope you enjoyed this. And I want you to come back because there's also DLC. There's apparently this thing called Next Exit that came out a couple months back. So let's watch that. So come back. See that. See the ending here. I love you all. And I'll see you next time. Bye!